Hello guys, welcome again to our YouTube channel, Thoughts of a Theorist. Last time we discussed the insights or the basics of density functional theory and how it is used for the calculation of the properties of atoms and molecules. Today we're going to discuss nanomaterials, which uses density functional theory. And as we know, nanomaterials are very useful materials that is in the field of material science and this is actually one of the most widely studied nowadays. This is direct applications on nanoelectronic devices and so on. Nanomaterials are actually materials that are few atoms thick. There are many nanomaterials that we know. We have the quasi one-dimensional materials, we have the two-dimensional materials and so on. Now to put this into perspective, suppose we imagine an ant. The ant is actually approximately 5 million nanometers long. If we have a strand of hair, for example, and we measure the thickness of the hair, on average, the approximate thickness of the hair is 90,000 nanometers. Now suppose we have a sheet of paper, and we measure the thickness of that sheet of paper, we can find out that it's actually approximately 75,000 nanometers thick. Now we, we move to a smaller one. Suppose we have or we can measure the wideness of the red blood cells. It's actually approximately 7,000 nanometers wide. In the DNA or our deoxyribonucleic acid, it's actually approximately 2.5 nanometers wide. And when we are talking about nanomaterials, when we are talking about quasi one-dimensional materials or two-dimensional materials, we are actually referring to this range. Those are materials that have ranges from one angstrom or from 2.5 nanometers to approximately 50 or slightly larger than 50 nanometers long or, or large nanomaterials. So see, we can really view nanomaterials as very, very small materials that are in the range of nanometers and we really cannot see or we, we cannot see or observe this using our naked eyes. Now there are many nanomaterials, as what I've said earlier, that we know. We have here the quasi one-dimensional materials, for example, is we have the carbon nanotube, which we will be showing later in our next videos. And we also have these two-dimensional materials. Now, the era of two-dimensional materials started with the discovery of graphene. As we know, a graphene is a two-dimensional honeycomb structure of carbon atoms. So just imagine that we have a pile of carbon atoms that is oriented in a planar orientation. Suppose we have a sheet of paper, and then we orient our sheet of paper in a horizontal or in a plane floor and then we pile our carbon atoms there. And when we have this lattice of atoms or this hexagonal lattice of atoms of our carbon atoms, we can have this so-called graphene. Now, after the discovery of graphene by uh, Novoselov, or after it has been exfoliated or it has been uh, created in the laboratory by Novoselov, many other two-dimensional materials have been discovered. We have the hexagonal boron nitride nanomaterial. We have, okay, uh, the fluorographene. You have the tungsten disalinide and so on. And these are very nice nanomaterials because they have direct applications on devices, on nanoelectronic devices, on, on, on gas sensing and so on. For example, if we have a silicene, which is a two-dimensional honeycomb structure of silicon atoms, as you know, the carbon atom in the periodic table and the silicon are uh, both located in the same group, which means that they have similar properties. And because of the discovery of graphene, the scientists have thought that maybe there is an analog of graphene called silicene, which is a two-dimensional honeycomb structure of silicon atoms. And it has been found out that they are right. No? There really is a silicene. And graphene and silicene have been proven in experiments or in and computations that they really are very nice gas storage 
uh, materials. They can sense gases. So, for example, we have this uh, gases, carbon gases or hydrogen gases in the atmosphere. Carbon uh, graphene and silicene can really detect those gases. We also have this transition metal like chalcogenides, uh, which basically is a two-dimensional material that has been formed by sandwiching a transition metal with two chalcogen atoms. So we have this following transition metals. We have the uh, okay, molybdenum, we have the niobium, the tungsten, the titanium, uh, and, and etc. And we also have these chalcogen atoms. We have the sulfur, we have the selenide, and so on. And if we sandwich one of these transition metals to two of these chalcogen atoms, we can have this so-called transition metal like chalcogenides. For example, we have this niobium diselenide. As we know, niobium is a transition metal and selenide is a chalcogen atom. So basically, if we sandwich this niobium, this one indicated by the gray color, with two selenide atoms forming a niobium diselenide, we can have this transition metal decalcogenide. This is a two-dimensional material which has characteristics or which has a remarkable properties. Now, it has trigonal prismatic phase and it is naturally metallic at room temperature and it has direct applications on nanoelectronics and superconductors. So if you have questions regarding our discussion or if you have some suggestions or uh, queries <clears throat> or uh, if you may request uh, some videos about nanomaterials or condensed matter physics, just send me an email or just comment your suggestions in our comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe.